Thank you so much for doing this interview with me. Um, I got to ask you straight off the bat because we're here at the List Gallery, uh, Yorkville, Toronto, and right now it is steaming hot out there. How are you handling the heat, my friend? Uh, I'm just somehow trying to survive. Uh, I dr just drink lots of water and ignore it, right? Uh, it is definitely better than the winter, so I will not complain as much. There you go. But things are keeping hot, too, in here at the List Gallery. Yeah. Uh, your artwork, as we can see behind you, amazing on the collection that you have here. Uh, especially, of course, as we can see, there's a Star Wars theme. We're going to talk a little bit about that, too. But um, how does it feel having your artwork here at the List Gallery? Because a lot of great artists and photographers have been able to show their exhibits here. And it's really been something special. Uh, I, I really welcome the opportunity that... Uh, this gallery has provided for me here to, to show my work. I think it's a great way for me to expand upon the opportunities that were uh, perhaps uh, lacking in, uh, in other areas of my life. Mind you, I'm also very busy, so this did provide a, an, an opportunity to pursue that as well. So, Well, I need to learn a little bit more, of course. Uh, originally, you're from where? Uh, I know you're Canadian. From Winnipeg. Winnipeg. Yeah. Growing up, though, um, art, how did that all come into uh, basically the, your life and the things that you do? Uh, well, I was uh, pretty sheltered, sheltered as, a, as a kid, and uh, I just had to figure out stuff on my own for the most part. Uh, as I was getting older into my teen years, uh, I started hanging out with musicians and other people that were doing their own thing, and I thought, well, I need something else to do myself because I'm not really you know, connecting on a music level. I have no art, no musical talent or, or even desire, really. So I thought, well, I'm just going to do my own thing, right? So I fell into drawing and, and eventually painting. And then, you know, I've been doing it now for whatever, 30 years, and it's been great. So I haven't really looked back, and, you know, it still does provide that, uh, that inspiration and that, uh, that sort of uh, desire to say something that I, you know, probably wouldn't have done if I hadn't had that opportunity as I was a really young person, so. What were some of the things that you were drawing when you were younger? I always remember the kid that was in my class who was the great drawer, yeah. Batman, Superman, those kind of things he was always drawing. What were you doing? Uh, I was just doing drawings of, uh, like, I, I don't know if you remember Details Magazine yeah. from the 80s, so I would take the models in there because it was heavy on the uh, black and whites. So I would just take the models or the, the stars of the time and just draw them in pencil and charcoal, and then that would be it. I just a constant barrage of that. Obviously, having no context, I was just essentially copying and pasting, but enlarging the the sizes of the images and then I would had a I had a restaurant that I was working in that I would just you know try to sell them at and that was uh, how everything started in a way. Do you remember the first person that actually said to you I mean because there's one thing when you're doing it you're going okay this is pretty good but somebody that of course you respected said you got talent here I think this is something yeah. that you should do. Uh, I did uh, I, uh, a portrait of uh, uh, was it Charles Bukowski? or actually it was William S. Burroughs that I did for uh, uh, the uh, lead singer of a punk band in Winnipeg. And I mean, initially he treated me like garbage up to the point that I did this painting that he saw and, he, and then he really liked it. So he wanted me to do another one, or I mean a drawing. And so I did it. Then after that, he just treated me like gold. So <laughs> it was weird how that sort of, that shift happens and how people change and treat you differently based on what you do. I mean, they should just treat me normally anyways, like a normal person, but it was just interesting. And that, and that stuck with me for a long time. No, so so you, you kind of mentioned how the progression happened, though, but I mean, work-wise, though, I mean, was this something that you did as a job, as a passion, or is this something that you did on one side, you are doing other things, and then eventually it became something that uh, you were able to do all the time? Um, I, I do this all the time, but uh, it's never been a, a way to, for me to... Make, make an income that was able to sustain any sort of uh, degree of, uh, I'll even just use the word happiness, because you know, I got to the point in my life where I got sick of being broke. So I, I had to create something else. So I have now, as we speak, I have my own house painting business with uh, eight employees. And, and so with that, I'm able to still do the art, mind you, at the same time, not, not have the same sort of uh, perspective on, on 
requiring sales. So it gives me a bit more artistic freedom to, to just not worry about making the money part from it because I'm not using it as, an, as, a, as my sole source of income. Although I, I have in the past, but I mean, the, the, the income fluctuated way too much and I just got to the point where I can't rely upon it, right? It's just not a reliable source of uh, income. When it comes, though, to your drawings and your paintings, though, what do you rely on? What storylines? What attracts you? Especially because we're going to just in a moment get into what we have in here. What attracts you to art? Um, the, the fact that I can uh, take, uh, I guess, concepts that I think about and turn them into something a bit more... Uh, contemporary you know like pop culture for example is pretty strong in my work uh, I think about a lot of concepts a lot of philosophical concepts that uh, otherwise wouldn't be taken so either seriously or even lightheartedly even at all if I'm not being able to express them in the way that I'm trying to do in the medium of painting so well, I like the way you just said about, you know, taking things seriously or not to take things seriously because next to you is a painting that kind of says it all right there with the Joker and, of course, a Stormtrooper. And that seems to be a little bit of the theme that's going on here. It's sort of like a, a Star Wars theme, but it's not what people think. So you explain to me, my friend, what is going on and what I'm seeing and some of the other things that I see behind me also. Okay, well, this one here with, this, with the Joker, although, you know, the Joker also being prevalent in, because of the fact that those movies are currently out or fairly new, uh, I, I'm, I'm essentially making a comment on the fact that... Uh, the direction of Star Wars now has gone off on such a crazy tangent that I no longer have any respect for it. So why not make it a joke? Hence the Joker turned into a, you know, portion of a stormtrooper. So a very subtle approach of doing it. Mind you, ultimately it's up to the viewer to interpret uh, how they want the image themselves to because, I mean, it could be someone who loves the Joker and loves a Stormtrooper. I'm not going not gonna to sit here and go, oh, you can't buy that because, you know, that's not my, in, my intention, right? So, but ultimately, I just want to make people, you know, enjoy my painting. So, but I still have to have, you know, a direction, right? So that was, that was this painting's sort of, uh, you know, nucleus of idea, right? I don't want to give too much away, though, because I think folks should come down and check out what is here. But just like, for example, the one just over your shoulder here, I don't think I've ever seen stormtroopers doing ballet and dancing together. The inspiration behind that. Uh, well, the fact that uh, stormtroopers uh, are, you know, is it in the far the, is the cano canonical uh, approach. Uh, they don't have a personality. They're, they're very, uh, they don't have any sort of individualistic uh, sort of thing about them. They all look the same, they're all the same height, they're all, you know, they all have the same sort of voiceover that's pretty banal and boring. It looks like they're sound talking in a, like through a microphone or a fan or something. So I, I thought, you know, a, a really good way to, to make this contemporary on top of the fact that it's already, you know, contemporary is to give them some personality. Well, you know what? It's, again, I don't want to give too much away. I'm just going to go with those two. I think folks should come down because okay. it's just not about Star Wars or Stormtroopers. No. There are other uh, great paintings here, too. When it comes to color, though, um, what attracts you the most? Like, how do you think about that when you're doing your paintings and going, okay, these are the right colors that's going to bring out what I'm feeling right now with this? Uh, well, I'm, uh, I'm probably just biased towards using certain colors already from the practice of using them like i like a lot of pop poppy like bubble gum like sugary candy colors because they have a they have a certain impression already so by changing that impression by using those colors i'm able to sort of change the perception of the, the type of work that people are going to look at and so it's going to have a different meaning so i'm going to play with the stereotype of what that represents like for example pink is for girls and blue is for boys like you just got, totally dispel that and change it up and turn it around and make it all different for people right because so, that's i think that's what's really needed right 
Well, you know what? You can feel that. You can see that here. I got to say congratulations on the work. If folks want to get in touch with you, social media-wise, where do they go? Is there a website? And, of course, you know, again, social media. Uh, well, they can always uh, contact List Gallery here. Uh, otherwise, I am on Instagram at uh, Robert Farmer, two R's at the beginning. And uh, that's pretty much the only... I mean, I have a website. It's kind of dated. <laughs> I don't really uh, want to get into it at this moment, but... Uh, Instagram is probably the best approach. I like that. Look, my friend, congratulations on all this. Love what I'm seeing here. And again, cannot wait to see what, what's going to happen when people get a chance to come down and see Great. all of this. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you.